between our visitors and our home team. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. Happy to be with you. And, CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical. Who wins up front? Who runs the ball the best and controls the clock? They will come out the victor. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section, where the columnists write, possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave away the game plan? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> On first and ten, Travis over the middle complete. It's Young. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early. Something safe. Something they're confident about. Something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. So just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. He needed a yard. That's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, mm -hmm. aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a give right side. Corbin, and this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. And it's possible that today the most important group could be the linebackers. Yeah, the second level, as we like to call them, right? Defensive front has to control things, but the linebackers, they do more than clean up. They help create big plays. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Second and nine now. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. At a glance at the man under center at 6'5", he always demands attention. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team that wins. Quickly here, and that's complete. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. And the quarterback, he's got some big threats at wideout. And they seem to get bigger all the time, don't they, Brandon? Every time I look out and watch a game, we're getting these bigger, more athletic, acrobatic receivers. We have some today. Let's From the 22, go, here's second and eight. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Open man is lost, complete. And they work this well up field across the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Down they go with Dixon. And he works his way forward for about four up to the Get midfield ready, strike. Boom. And the linebacking core could certainly be crucial today. They do everything really, really well. Fly to the football, defend the pass, you name it, they do it, as well as set the defensive front. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. I got another 23. I got you, 23. Check, bump stick. Check, ready. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. They'll look to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Here we go. 50. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he will find his man on the outside. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. 
I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Pace. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. He'll drop to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 12-yard line. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to I want it. I didn't offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the <laughs> smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. Back to throw now on first down. He's going to have the hook up to Ross. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers to you know, change up their timing, they're just going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if as, as a defensive... And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. From three yards out, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. Seven-nothing Broncos. So that one along 11-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. First down, Travis. And a quick throw here, that's complete. 
And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and seven now from the 28. They'll try the left side. Corbin. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Looking to throw. Travis, wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not Let's before go. they work it across midfield. That one good for 24 yards. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and ten as they've got things rolling on this drive. Back to throw. Travis. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Two seconds to go, first quarter. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. On second down now, Corbin, and this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Bucks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and 14. Operating from the gun. Travis looking deep. deep. This is caught inside the 15. And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. Set, red, for 90, more. They go play action here on first down. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Let's a go, line of go, scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. And to give this time to the tailback. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. If you're going to throw it, something quick. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. This is a 26-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. 
And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went we and go. went. No adjustments hey, and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down, four down. <laughs> on first down, pace. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Here's a second and seven. Got a man open. It's Ross. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll drop the throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. Hartney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. A quick throw now complete to Ross. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Back to throw here. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. Seems to me that our friend, Old Momentum, <laughs> I think he's definitely changed teams in this game. It's only going to grow after that sack, and now, heck, they can get the ball back here and possibly even get the lead. The Broncos send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. You rarely 
normally call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here we go. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And no forward progress here. This is going to be a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. Now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. This is taken at the 15. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Let's go now. Let's go now. Let's go now. Third and pace. Let's go. Two times. Two times. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. Ready. They'll run on first down. Pace. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. A play-action fake. They'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Broncos on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Let's so go, here's a go, first and go. 10 at the 38. They run the counter. Pace. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down. 
Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, it's complete. And down inside the 15, he goes. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Here we go. 50, plant. Get that quarterback at all costs. My 14, my 14. Here we go. Here we go. And go. On first down. Pace. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Bear in mind, that wasn't a big lineman back there for the tackle for loss. That was a cornerback. So are you saying the myth has been shattered? That all of them are not just cover corners? Some of them actually will stick their nose in and tackle when necessary? That's what we just saw, isn't it? Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Now a draw play with Dixon. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and 5. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. And he is out of bounds here. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. down under a heavy rush and down he goes now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half so they get pushed back to the 11 and here's second and goal second and 11 Dixon complete now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. This defense hasn't let them in yet. They'll need to stiffen here. Third and goal from the two. They'll set up a throw. Completes it to Dixon. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. And this one is right through. And the lead stretches to nine. It's now 12 to three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. 
And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should sit on it here because of what you just said. They haven't made anything happen offensively. Getting ready to go into the half, give them a chance to take a deep breath, exhale a little bit, and start over. I don't know if this is the time to push it myself. Yeah, right now under 100 yards of total offense. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half. And some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. So we come upon halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. This is fielded at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. They'll run on first down. Pace. Well, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Hey, four down, four down. They'll keep it on the ground. Pace, and he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. He'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. A gain of six there on first. 
They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll go down at the 28. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs. Play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point. Going to make that defense stand up and stop them. On second down now, Pace. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now back to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Now he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Dixon running from the shotgun. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They'll set up to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. From six yards away. And the Broncos push further out in front. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. They're going to try and run. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, a good one as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. 
Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Throwing to start the drive. Travis. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. A gain of six there on first. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a burn coverage. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Seven yards there and a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Mike 17. <laughs> to throw on second down. Travis caught. It's Wilson. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 20-yard line. Inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole let's in go, that zone. Go, Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second and three. He completes it to Wilson. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. From the gun, Travis. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here we go. 50, man. Give it up, defense. They'll try to run this one in. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Looking to throw. Travis. Blitz coming, and down he goes. 
Probably a little bit of a surprise call there on third and inches that they decided to throw the football. And how difficult is that for an offensive line when they look up and see all those extra bodies coming at them? Tons of bodies coming in. They get a huge sack there. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And his kick here is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And Charles, you'd have to think this is where you want to start taking some time off the clock. Oh, definitely, because you got the lead, right? You take a good look up there and you say, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, you're not in full-out protect mode. You want to make sure you run it, throw it safe, take some time off, and eat it up. Here we go, here we go. My 60 Pittsburgh. Come on. Not taking your advice, they'll throw first play. Looking sideline incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This quarterback now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Check out. And they'll try the jet sweep here. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. That's complete. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized. Executed well, 
and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The Broncos on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Dixon again. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. Uh, Charles, all things considered, I guess that's not a critical miss at this stage, is it? No, but still everything helps when you're trying to finish off a ball game. And you're right, not critical in terms of the scoreboard and the team, but the guy with the golden foot, he knows he's only as good as his last kick. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Throwing to start the drive. Travis. Wilson's got it complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 12 yards to pick up. Good enough for an Arizona first. Ready, ready. This quarterback now 13 of 15 passing. That's good for 87%. It's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Travis. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and ten. From the gun, Travis. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it here to the ten-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Let's go, let's hope go, he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On second down, Corbin. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Second and four. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. From four yards out as his guys are back within a single score. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet 
or they just executed better because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone well whatever he did speaking of the offensive coordinator might be using that formula going forward it worked there yeah it worked very well he and his field general in pretty good sync right now they're starting to move the ball well the extra point splits the uprights and now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. First down, Pace, and to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. How good has he been throwing the football, though? And despite that incompletion, that's just the third time he's been off target this entire game. And Brandon, I've been on the other side of this equation, trying to defend a guy who's been this hot, and it chips away at your confidence. And when you're not confident when you're trying to defend, it makes you slower to the football, and it leads to more completions for them. He's going to have the hook up to Ross. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. A rough go there on third down, a loss of four. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away, trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Amazing, perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. 
but the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And I think the offense is going to keep possession. Yes, they are. But they're backed up now at their own two-yard line. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he's able to get it out of there. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end and you still have the lead and now the drive starts with a completion out to the right 13 yards to pick up there good for a cleveland first i got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there didn't it did their job forced the punt now nice start to the drive offense has to do their part yeah they certainly do but what a great start for them they've got to go thank the guys on d Back to throw now on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. But there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On play action, they'll throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 21. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Now the Bucks gonna use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. That one looks like he'll throw here. Got a man open. It's Ross. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down. Got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understand where they are in the field? fake they'll look to throw and this is caught and that could seal it it's a touchdown well it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now but 
I'm looking at your face, and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Now the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now the Bucks down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Complete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again. Travis got his man complete over the middle. It's Young. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Second down pass play got them eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Back to throw. Travis and Robinson with a big catch. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first and 10, Travis going right side here, and that's complete. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. A very solid gain of 27. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. First down now, but that clock rolling. 17's Mike. Mike 17. On first down, Travis. That is caught inside the five. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Clock running. The Bucs try to go quickly and get set. 
Operating from the gun, Travis to the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Line of scrimmage, again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Looking to throw. Travis to the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now, what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Back to throw. Travis. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. A try here for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it winds up at a touchdown for Arizona. Twenty-five seconds to go. A must recover if they're going to have any chance. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it. They do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. For the Broncos, seemingly assured, they go down to a knee. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. And they take a knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. But there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room. Throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here.
And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just the week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn.